Hi, I'm Toby May. I'm the vicar of St. James and St. Luke's Church here in Glossop, and welcome to our first virtual sermon as part of our first virtual Sunday service. I hope it's helpful. Um, if not, you can always push, well, you can push pause or you can flick and watch something else on the internet. Um, that is the advantage of an online sermon compared to a normal one. Um, but Afterwards, I hope you'll join the online conversation that will go on in, uh, well, somewhere over there or there or wherever you can read about it. Um, and you can also get involved during the week by sharing your thoughts in your growth group. Over the coming weeks and months, I really hope that we get better than this um, and that we can provide you with many more resources. But today we're starting simple um, and that I suppose that comes naturally for some of us, doesn't it? Now, you may be thinking that this is just a normal vicar video. Actually, I've never seen a normal vicar video, so I'm not quite sure what that is. But actually, this could actually be something far more sinister, because here I have equipment to make a bomb. Oh, yes. At least... I do, if you believe, a seven-year-old French lad on a campsite in Brittany. Or, for that matter, his mother, who helpfully confirmed his suspicions and reported us. <laughs> now, to the untrained eye, the words battery charger for Panasonic camera may be a clue to its real identity. It may also be a bit unlikely that a bomb target would be a wash block on a rural campsite in France. But our family were definitely under the suspicion of that lad and his mum. And that was before Brexit. Remember that? We were staying in a foreign land. On the campsite there were only French people and us. Things were unfamiliar. There was strange money. They drove on the wrong side of the road. They had a different language. They ate different food. I remember going to the market once and we were buying these sausages and we had the option of donkey sausages. They had a bit of a kick, I must admit. Nay, no, lad. <laughs> of course, that's why we'd gone there on the holiday in the first place, because it was a different country. It was interesting. It was exciting. We were in a foreign land. But today... In the UK, we can feel like we're in a foreign land, can't we? It's as if the landscape around us is rapidly being redrawn. Every day there seem to be new rules, a new language. COVID-19, self-isolate, social distancing, even a new currency. Oh yes. And of course, it's impacted our worship as a church. It's impacted pretty much everything we do as a church, from our children's work through to our care for the bereaved. So how do we navigate this strange land? Well, let's turn the clock back. In fact, let's turn the clock back a long, long way. About two and a half thousand years, that is. That's even before the last election. Remember that? Enter Daniel and his friends, a group of teenagers. They were well off, they were good looking, they were clever. Everything was going well for them. And then suddenly it seems like the world just falls apart. Their nation's invaded. Many people are killed. They're captured by an enemy army and they've marched a thousand, they marched a thousand miles to Babylon. They're re-educated in a different language, a different culture. They can no longer gather to worship as they used to. In fact, they're expected to worship new gods. They're even given new names, named after those gods. Bel to Shazam. The change for those lads was huge. Just as it was, as we read in the Bible elsewhere, for the Israelites leaving Egypt or the new Christians under Roman rule. Far bigger changes than what we're facing here today. Their faith was literally tested by fire. And yet, 
their faith didn't weaken. It grew stronger. Oops, bit of a hiccup in the technology there, never mind. So, what did Daniel and his mates do in this new land? And what can we learn from them if we want to grow stronger in our faith in these difficult times? Here are five D's. Some of you will love the fact that we've got things all beginning with the same letter here. I know, some of you will D for despair. Um, or maybe D for doubt, actually. But there we go. Here we go. Five D's from Daniel's story. Displayed using the latest new technology. I have here my stylus. Number one. Daniel discerned God's will. He spent time reading the Bible. He spent time praying. He spent time listening to God. We can read that. We can see that as we look through his story in the book of Daniel. And I'd encourage you to read through, especially those first six chapters, what's going on. He learned to recognise God's voice through prayer, through his reading even through dreams. And at this time, we desperately need to hear God's voice, to know his will as individuals, but also as a church together. Secondly, Daniel, what I prepared earlier, decided to go God's way. I don't think I'd ever make a repeat of this. Would I? Let's just do that. Again. Daniel decided to go God's way, even when it was tempting for him to go and do something completely different. He didn't sit on the fence. He didn't drift along. He decided he was determined for that matter to follow God's will no matter what. And following Jesus is often like paddling against the flow. If you don't decide to move forwards, you will drift back. I'd encourage us all at these times to decide what practical steps, put those things in another D in the diary, to know what you're going to do to go God's way, to do his will. And it might be to be new things, what we normally do. Number three, Daniel denied himself. Never denied God, but he denied himself. He let go of his own ambitions, his own security, his own position, his ego. And he decided that he was going to deny himself in order to follow God and indeed for the good of others. And at times like this, it is easy for us to look after number one, isn't it? We're being told to say, stay at home. For those of us English, an Englishman's home is his castle, they'd say. And there is that temptation to pull up the drawbridge and to just look after ourselves, to buy everything we need. Instead of loving God, first of all, and loving others. At a time when people are confused, understandably, people are afraid, people are worried, people need help. And people need God for that matter, as always. There are things that we can do, but they will involve denying ourselves. Think this Mothering Sunday of a number of mums who would have been looking forward to being with their families, maybe, who are going to be alone, or other carers, or grandparents, uncles, aunts, nephews, whoever. There are many people in need of help. But often that will involve denying ourselves for the sake of others. Fourthly, Daniel was disciplined. Not a popular word these days, but he was. He adopted a regular pattern of prayer. We see it even when threatened with the den of lions three times a day and he stuck to it. And this is a great opportunity to adopt new habits. And we'll be looking at some of the options of those over the coming weeks um, and indeed months probably, of Bible reading, of prayer, of serving others, 
What habits, what new habits could you adopt? One, maybe there's things that you've always wanted to do and feel guilty that you haven't been able to do. Maybe there's things you have done you feel guilty now that you can't do. But we can look at what can we do? What new habits, what new disciplines can we adopt? Patterns can we build into our lives? Firstly, discerning God's will. Secondly, deciding to go God's way. Thirdly, denying ourselves. Fourthly, being disciplined. And the fifth one is Daniel. Wait for it. Daniel dared. Yes, Daniel dared. <laughs> he stood up for God, even when it was risky. He picked up the challenge, and we can too. Not taking risks with other people's health. That's not daring. That's stupid. But being adventurous in our faith. Giving up a bad habit. Giving up a dependency. Showing love and compassion when others aren't. Finding new ways to encourage one another in our faith. How about praying with someone over the phone? If you've never done it, give it a go. Dare. Talking to other people about our faith. And that might be... Um, uh, outside, it might be with neighbours or something like that, but it might be now online. How do we use social media? How do we use emails? How do we use the phone? Not just to chit chat about what's going on, but actually to encourage one another, either to explore faith for the first time or to encourage people in developing their faith. Dare to be different. Dare to show love for God. Daring to show love for others. Five Ds. As we navigate this foreign land that we find ourselves in, we will, like Daniel, need to change what we do. But it is important to remind ourselves as well that no virus can change who we are. We're created in God's image. We're children of Almighty God. We are together the body of Christ. We're empowered with his Holy Spirit. That can't change. And as Paul writes, no matter how worried, no matter how confused we feel at these times, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The question is, in response to that love, what will we do? What will I do? What will you do? What will we do? Will we make more time and deliberately try and discern God's will? Will we decide to go God's way? Will we deny ourselves for the sake of Christ and for others? Will we be disciplined in adopting habits and patterns to our lives that draw us closer to God? And will we dare to take risks for him, for the sake of Jesus, our Lord, who leads us onward into this new land and beyond. I believe if we do, we can come out of this stronger. We can come out stronger in our love for God, for one another, and also in our love for others. I wonder, what is it that you will do to make a difference? in the days 